Hello and welcome to part 4 of our input field exploits module. So these are the few assumptions that I am working with. I am assuming that you have a prerequisite knowledge of following tools and software. If you don't, please check out the resources mentioned at the end of this video. This is our module structure and we are on part 4 that is controlling the execution. So in this part, we will be doing a couple of things. We will first identify the location of character at which EIP is overwritten. We will verify that location and then we will redirect the execution to the memory address which is pointed to by ESP register. Now we have a couple of choices here. We can either hard code ESP address or we can find an accessible reliable memory address that contains an instruction such as jump ESP. Now we have two prerequisites for such a memory address that it should not be affected by data execution prevention or DEP or address space layout randomization or ASLR and also it should not contain bad characters. So finally we will be doing a jump back to the larger portion of the buffer to escape from the limited buffer space that we saw earlier. So let's move to the lab now. So on my Windows 7 machine I already have Axe SSH running and it is attached to Immunity Debugger and this is the POC script that we created earlier. Now in order to find out the location of the character which overwrites EIP, we need to send a unique pattern to this application. To generate that pattern, we will be using a tool called MSF Pattern Create which is available in Kali Linux. So I will go to my Kali machine and I have a terminal window running here. And in it, I'll write a command msf hyphen pattern underscore create, and the length for this will be 500 characters as we saw earlier. So I'll copy this string and paste it into a POC here instead of 500 A's now. You will be sending the application this string. So I'll save this Python script and go to my terminal window and run it. And if I open this text file here, which is axe.sh.txt, I can see that the string has been written to this file here. So I'll just copy it and then go to my application. To go to the log file name field, we'll go to details, settings, logging, select log all session output and then here we paste the string press ok and ok once again so you can see that application has crashed and eip has been overwritten with this particular value so let's copy this value and go to a kali machine and let's query the msf pattern using msf pattern offset and length is 500 and to query we will paste the value that we saw earlier so it says that exact match at offset 214 that means character from 215 to 218 overwrite EIP so let's copy this and go to a POC and paste it here for a reference. Now we need to test this offset. To do that, we'll remove the string and again send it 214As first and then we'll send 4Bs. So this time EIP should be overwritten with 4Bs or 42 which is the hex value of capital B and as part of our remaining buffer we will send a string of c's so let's say 300 so i'm just making a rough estimate here to make it more or less equal to 500 so now i'll go to command window run this script and if i open axe.sh.txt you can see that the new string has been generated i'll copy it and then I'll restart my application in Immunity Debugger and run this application. And 
and to go to log file name field we go to details settings login tab select log all session output and paste it here press ok and then ok so as you can see here that EIP has been overwritten with 42, 42, 42, 42, which I said earlier is X for capital B and ESP has been overwritten with C's here. And if you scroll a bit up, you can see that before C's there are four B's and then a larger portion of A's. So we now know that we have at least 214 characters or 214 bytes in the larger portion of this buffer just still not sufficient for a regular payload shell code so we'll have to improvise our technique this is something we'll cover in the next video for now moving on to the next step of this process and find a way to jump to the memory address pointed to by ESP register to do that I'll restart this application run it So our application is running now and now I'll use Mona library to find memory addresses of all jump ESP or equivalent instructions in this application and related modules. So to do that, I'll issue the command exclamation mark Mona and jump hyphen R ESP. So this command has executed. Let's go to the log window. And it says that it has found a total of 10 pointers. And if you look at a list of pointers here, you can see that this is not useful to us as it contains a null byte. This might be useful to us. This we can also use. This address we can also use. And as a matter of fact, we can use all addresses or any of these addresses after the first address. So for the purpose of this module, I'll go ahead and select the fourth address and let's copy it to clipboard. I'll copy the message part, go back to our POC and paste it here for our reference. Now we need to replace these four B's with this memory address which points to push ESP and return push ESP and return instructions. Now we are doing this because as we saw that EIP will be overwritten with these four B's and any address that we write onto EIP will then get executed. So essentially what this means is that if we overwrite EIP with, with this address then these instructions will be executed and we will be able to jump to the ESP register. So I'll remove these four B's and I'll write it in the reverse format, which is the little Eden format. If you know, if you want to know more about why we are writing in the little Eden format, I suggest that you go ahead and check about Intel architecture and what is little Eden format and why we use little Eden format in Intel processors. So let this be an exercise for you. And if you have any questions or queries regarding that, please feel free to address them in the Q&A sections of this course. So moving on to writing this address, we have already written hex 04, we write hex 3f and we will write then hex 0e and finally hex 05. Let's save this and run this POC. So this has generated a new string for us with the memory address. We copy it, go to our target application and we go to details, settings, logging, log all session output, select this and then paste our string, press OK. Now before I press this OK, I forgot to place a breakpoint at this memory address. This breakpoint is necessary to see if our code is working. If I don't, then we don't have a way to know if this instruction was executed or not. So I go to the CPU view 
by using this C button here and in here I'll go to the expression or the address that I've copied and place a breakpoint here using F2 button and now I go to the target application and press OK so you can see that the breakpoint has been hit at this address so that means EIP has been overwritten with the address that we have specified and you can verify it from here and if I step into this one by one, so first push ESP instruction is executed and then return. And now we have landed into the portion of ESP which is written with C's. So you can verify with follow and dump and you can also verify the address here and the address here which is same. So the next instruction that will be executed is at this address and you can also verify it from the value of EIP which again points to the same address and if I scroll down you can see that all these memory addresses have been written with 43 which is hex for capital C and if I scroll up you can see that this was the memory address that we have overwritten with but it has got changed due to some reason and above that is our buffer of A's that is 41 in hex. So our next step is to jump from this portion of buffer to this larger portion of A's. In order to do that we will first restart this application. Run it. So our application has restarted and then we'll go back to our Kali machine and we'll use a tool called MSF NASM underscore shell. So we are using this tool to get the instructions equivalent to jumping backwards 125 bytes. So to jump backwards we'll write jump dollar minus 125. So these instructions are EB81. Now we can jump a bit further because we have that kind of buffer space. However, if I increase it to let's say 129, you can see that the length of this instruction has increased and it has been appended by six Fs. Though it won't create a problem in this case because it is not a null character. However, it might be a bad character, which we'll figure out in a later video. So for the technique that we'll be using to get a shell, this jump is sufficient. So I'm going to use this instruction and I'll copy it and go back to my Windows 7 machine and I'll go back to my POC. Let's make a comment here of jump. jump dollar minus 125 and its equivalent instruction is EB81. So what we will do is we will write this EB81 instruction here but first to be on the safer side I give it a buffer of 10 knobs and then I'll write hex EB hex 81 the jump instructions and then we'll write C which is 300 C's and I'll save it when you go to my command window run this POC and if I open this axe ssh.txt you can see a new string has been generated I'll copy it and then I go back to the immunity debugger and set up breakpoint at the memory address here and then I go back to my target application and go to details settings logging select log all session output and paste the content of a clipboard press ok ok again and you can see that breakpoint has been hit and if I step into it one by one we will be taken to ESP first we have now hit our padding of knob instructions. So if I just step into these knobs and go here and now we have come to our jump instructions which will take us back to this memory address and 
we'll do that and if i step into this instruction and land back into the larger portion of the buffer which was overwritten by capital a's as you can see here so now i have around 115 bytes to write my payload shell code and obtain a shell so we'll have to improvise a technique to fit our payload shell code into this limited space and this is something we'll cover in the next video these are the few learning resources you can use to learn more about the tools and techniques that we are using in this module thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next part